Hello, I'm Falafelcopter, and I would like to welcome you to Metronome! What is Metronome, you might ask? Well, it's the show you're watching right now! And by you, I mean probably not many people at all. But that's actually a good thing for reasons. Anyway, in a recent Extra Credits episode, by the way, they're awesome, and you should watch their show right now if you don't already, they discussed what they described as the first rule of design. I won't be able to discuss it anywhere near as eloquently as they do, but the basic idea is that you shouldn't spend too much time in the idea phase of creativity because it doesn't leave you any chance to iterate and make the mistakes you need to make to hone your craft into something resembling quality. One metaphor I like is of a carpenter. It goes something like this. Every carpenter makes a load of sawdust before they make anything of value. The idea being that you have to create a bunch of worthless trash along the way towards creating something good because a beginner artisan is going to make a bunch of mistakes. But in making those mistakes, they will learn and improve. The purpose of the metaphor is to knock you out of a brain trap where you become quickly discouraged because your first few attempts at a craft don't measure up to the masters of that craft. How could they? You just started! Every time you screw up at something, you get better at making it, and eventually you're making things that are as good as you wanted your first thing to be. I think a lot of artists in multiple media... Medias? Whatever. I think a lot of artists in multiple media are partially to blame for this, since there's a temptation to hide the mistakes you've made to create the impression that you started amazingly talented and skilled. It does the audience a disservice, because it makes them feel like there's something wrong with them. But it also does the crafter a disservice too, because sharing your mistakes not only allows people to give you helpful advice, but it also allows them to learn from your mistakes so that maybe they don't have to make as many of them when it comes time for them to craft their own whatevers. The master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried. Who said that? I'm not sure. I read it somewhere and it sounded good. A quick Google search tells me that a lot of people have no idea, but one site linked it to cartoonist Stephen McCraney, and it does sound like something he would write. One of his comics was about exactly what we're discussing, but the quote actually reads, The only difference between me and the master is time. Am I misquoting him? Uh, maybe? I looked up the sawdust quote and I couldn't find it anywhere either. I think my mom may have made it up. Who knows? No time for research! We're failing already! That brings me to Metronome. Metronome is Falafel's fail faster format. I want to make videos to put up on the internets, but the fact that I'm comparing myself to people who are already masters of the trade is paralyzing. The solution? Create a video format with a low bar for quality and a quick turnaround time so I have the chance to actually learn and improve instead of spending literally all my time staring at wood. Oh man, that carpenter metaphor ran its course a while ago, didn't it? Nope! No time to edit! Keep going! Why is it called Metronome? On the viewer side, the name is a reference to the Pokémon attack of the same name which randomly chooses almost any attack in the game. It's a gamble, but it's not thought of as a very good gamble because the move pool is swimming with absolutely terrible and weak attacks. Like the attack, this show will be a little random. And like the attack, a lot of it is probably not going to be of the highest quality. That's fine though, because that's the entire point. On the creative side, it's a reference to the musical tool of the same name. Its entire purpose is to help you create and keep you paced and on point. The inexorable clicking quietly and calmly drives you forward. Let's set down some ground rules. An entire metronome episode can take no longer than 90 minutes to write. Ideally, it should contain several smaller portions, henceforth called capsules, which should be no longer than two minutes each. Each episode should contain three such capsules. The reason behind this format is to keep the show punchy and limit the time spent with any one idea in case that idea turns out to be but. Also, shorter segments are easier to create in a limited time frame. This avoids situations where you leave an idea half finished and come back to it later and decide to scrap it. None of that. We're keeping everything. Final rule? At least one capsule of each episode cannot be scripted at all. Not comfortable with live commentary? Too bad! The sawdust train is leaving the station! I don't know about you, but I'm terrified. As a quick aside, before I continue, the idea for this format has been almost entirely gleaned from Zay Frank's show titled The Show. 
Also, look guys, my keyboard's gone insane! Go home, keyboard, you're drunk! Will what I just wrote fit into two capsules? Does continuing roughly the same idea across two capsules count as cheating? Oh well! The video for the show will be random gameplay footage captured during the week. This will further reduce turnaround time by making editing far easier. Production values? I hardly know her! A week has passed since recording the previous content. The purpose of the following segment is to discuss how well I followed the rules I made up while making a video attempting to follow those rules. Short answer, not very well at all. First of all, my original intention was for the video you just saw to be the first two capsules, which would then have been followed by a third unscripted capsule. In that capsule, I would have discussed a community-focused moderation tool for League of Legends titled The Tribunal. It did not go well. I would very much like not to share any of this with you, but in the interest of not being a complete hypocrite... Hi, I'm Falafelcopter, and this is my unscripted thing, and it's kind of scary because I don't really... Uh, see, I'm not very good at... Ooh. Hi, I'm Falafelcopter, and I'm doing a thing with no script. Hi, I'm Falafelcopter. Good, we've got that out of the way. I'm definitely Falafel Copter, okay. My dog is in the room. Hello, dog. Say something for the camera. Hey, hey, hey. This person's gonna report that a player is mean. That's... Now you know that he means business because it's capitalized. Generally, people capitalize things. Generally, people capitalize things when they mean them. Otherwise, you would be lying. As we all know, it's a sin to lie with caps lock. As you can see over here in the corner of the screen, I am terrified. <clears throat> I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh dear god, okay. Um. Oh, I said, um, you're not supposed to say, um, I broke a rule. You're not supposed to say, um. Uh, uh. It's not like it was entirely my fault, though. I mean, yes, I absolutely cannot handle live commentary yet, but the subject matter I chose made it much harder than it needed to be. Doing commentary over a video game allows you to react to events that are unfolding, which both gives you new things to talk about and also helps remind you about things you planned to say previously. Doing commentary over a bunch of text on a web page does none of those things. Also, even if I had miraculously managed to say something interesting, I would have had to edit out most of the visuals since due to it being a moderation tool, it would be full of swearing. Don't get me wrong, it was good practice, but it was a really stupid idea. What does this have to do with the rules? Well, since the first capsule was almost completely unusable, rule 3 and 5 have both been broken. Since that necessitated this postpartum discussion, I had to spend more time scripting, which has now broken rule 1 as well. Finally, since the video so far is up to around 6 minutes, rule 2 is also broken. The verdict? Complete failure. Though, I think the format was as much to blame as my attempt to follow it. Either way, this is good. Let's see if we can use what we've learned and improve the format. Let's begin. First, since failure is worthless without introspection, it might be useful to allow for a postpartum discussion at the end of each video. In it, we can ruminate on what worked, what didn't work, and plan changes for the future. Hmm. Maybe this segment should even be split off into its own video in the future, so as to not ruin pacing. Second, two minutes isn't enough time to really discuss anything well. Let's try scrapping rule two entirely. If future videos become too long-winded, we can try reinstating the rule with a more reasonable time frame. Third, forcing an unscripted segment every single time is incredibly restrictive. More importantly, Having one-third of the content I produce be bone-rattlingly terrifying is a good way to grind production to a complete halt. Let's go ahead and scrap this rule entirely as well. 
I think that practicing live commentary is something best left to an entirely separate format we can develop later on. So with that, here's the updated rule set. Number one, all scripting is done in 90 minutes. This is the same as before. Number two, the episode is split into three capsules of indeterminate length. Number three is the same as before. Number four, we'll finish with an introspective postpartum discussion if warranted. Number five, the scripting required by rule four does not add to the limit described in rule one. Yes, that looks a lot more reasonable now, doesn't it? Next time, we'll see how much of an improvement it really was.